Hello YouTube, this is Cruiser 700 bringing you a treat today from the lab where sometimes things do go wrong and we make the magic smoke come out. So what do we got here today? We have the Arduino. The Arduino is pretty cool because it gives people that don't have knowledge in electronics the ability to do some programming and do some pretty cool things. So. So let's get into this and uh, see what uh, see what we can do with this thing today. So I was looking around in my toolbox that is very unorganized and has crap laying everywhere. And guess what I found? I found the LM35 temperature sensor. Comes in a TO92 package. Um, I'll put the data sheet in the description so you could check it out. Uh, maybe you have one laying around. Maybe you need to order one. The good thing is, is the code we're going to look at today should work with any temperature sensor um, that outputs a voltage uh, linearly. LM35 outputs a voltage um, 10 millivolts per degree C. You can use that with an analog digital converter and you can turn that into a temperature with uh, just a little bit of math. Let's take a look at the code that we have. So the first thing that we want to do in our code to make this thing work is first um, we want to define our variables. We'll do that up here in the beginning of the code. I defined four integers and two float value. Why did I do that? The first integer value that we have here is the output of the temperature sensor. This is going to be where we input the voltage coming from the temperature sensor. So this is raw voltage coming from the sensor. And we decided to name that temperature underscore in equals zero. Now why did we pick zero? We picked zero in this in this particular case because we're going to use analog input port zero. So we give temp underscore in the value of zero. We can use that to our advantage later on in the code. The next variable we defined was temp underscore out. We gave that a value of zero. Now why did we give that a value of zero? Well it's a good thing to define your variables with a value of zero. And the purpose is, is because the the register that's holding this variable could have any value. And you don't want it to start out with some weird value like FF or 0F or something like that. So we defined it as zero so that we know what it is going into our code. And that's going to be the variable that holds our analog to digital converter value coming from the Arduino. So the next variable that we defined was an integer and it's ADC underscore LED underscore blue equals three. So why did we do three? Well we did three because again this is going to be the analog digital converter status LED pin and it's going to be on digital port three. So we did the same thing here integer ADC LED green equals 5. This is going to be our not busy indicator. Again we called it 5 because it's going to go to digital port 5. So the next two variables are what they call floats and you may or may not know what a float variable is so I shall tell you. An integer has no decimal point. It could be negative, it could be positive, but it does not have a decimal point. So one, two, three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. A float, on the other hand, a variable that does have a decimal point. So I think it could have up to six decimal points, something like that. It's a, it could be a really big number. Um, and it's very precise. It's got a lot of precision to it. So if you're doing analog conversions, and you're going to be reading sensors and things, it's better to truncate at the last possible step rather than truncate from the beginning because you're losing precision. So float temp C equals zero. This is going to hold our Celsius temperature conversion value and the float temp F is going to be the variable that holds our Fahrenheit temperature conversion value. And we'll see later down in the code where that comes into play. We defined our variables up here first. And then we do things in void setup that we only want to do once. Um, in this case, serial.begin9600. 
that's going to open the serial port at a 9600 baud rate. Um, you can set this for different bods. If you take a look in the Arduino reference guides, uh, you'll see what baud rates can be used. Uh, the next thing we did here was pin mode, and we set the temperature underscore in, which was our variable we defined up here, zero. So basically we wrote zero, comma, input. It's good to use a variable because then you only have to change it one place in your code instead of having to change it here and down here and here and here. Uh, sometimes you have the same variable show up many different times in your code and at that point it's good to use variables rather than constants because then you only have to change it once. We do pin mode, pin zero, input. So we set digital pin zero up as an input. Now as we progress we got void loop. Okay now this is going to be where our code runs at all the time. It's never going to go back up here and do the setup. It's never going to go back up here and redefine these variables. The first thing we do is uh, when I originally wrote this code I was using a I was using an LED that um, has three different colors, an RGB LED. So I have these few little pieces here uh, commented out uh, just for the purposes of um, this demonstration. So the first thing we do is a small delay and we don't have to do that delay right here but if we have this analog right uncommented then the delay is a is a good idea. So it doesn't matter that it's there. It's 125 milliseconds. Not a big deal. So we do a delay of 125 milliseconds and then we do analog right ADC LED blue comma 4 okay so ADC LED blue is one of our variables that we defined as 3 so that would mean analog right digital port 3 with a duty cycle of 4 I kind of explain what that will do so this is going to be the pulse width modulation output on analog pin port 3 with duty cycle of 2. So LED is on and dim. The lower the duty cycle, the dimmer the LED. The higher the duty cycle, the brighter the LED when you're using PWM. Okay, so we do another delay, 500 milliseconds, so it'll be half of a second. Then we actually perform our ADC conversion. Now, the LED is neat because when the blue LED is on, you know that it's it's uh, going to be doing the, a the ADC conversion. So it's kind of a, just a way to know what's going on inside of the chip, just a status marker. So the LED turns on, we delay for a half a second, it does the temperature conversion, so temp underscore out is where the conversion is going to be held and it's equal to analog read temp underscore in. Now analog read is it's going to perform the ADC conversion. It's going to read in the value and it's going to do the ADC conversion on it and store that digital value into this temp underscore out variable. So then we do analog write ADC LED blue zero so we turn the blue LED off. We delay for 125 milliseconds just to give it a little bit of time. And then we start to do our math. So here we have our variable temp underscore C equals 5, 5.0 volts divided by 1024.0 steps. Now the steps are representative of our analog to digital converter. So it's 10 bits inside the Arduino. It's a 10 bit ADC. <clears throat> and so we get 1,024 steps from those 10 bits. So this is our conversion factor to take our, up here we had temp underscore out. This gave us, this gave us the number of steps that's representative of the analog input. So this is, we have an analog voltage going in 
and we get a digital step value out. So these are our digital steps. And so down here we need to take those steps and we need to figure out what the voltage was coming out of that temperature sensor. And the way we do that is here. Volts per step times steps would give us volts. And because the temperature sensor is outputting 10 millivolts per degree C, we need to multiply by 100 to get our real degree C value. So temp underscore C will hold our centigrade temperature once we do this step. Now we come and if we want Fahrenheit, then we do temp underscore F equals 9.0 divided by 5.0. So we have 9 fifths C because temp underscore C is representative of our centigrade value. So we have 9 fifths C plus 32, which would convert our centigrade temperature to Fahrenheit. So now we have both of our values. We have our centigrade temperature here, and we have our Fahrenheit temperature here. So then all we got to do is print them out. So we do a serial dot print and we print a label so that the monitor will read temperature C equals and then we do a serial dot print on the same line of temp underscore C. So then we do the same thing. We print a label. We print the value of the Fahrenheit on the same line. This guy here, all this is doing is giving us like a line break between the next iteration. Because once we do this last delay of 5 seconds, 5,000 milliseconds, it's going to go right back up here and start from the beginning again and just keep looping and looping and looping through this code. Now that we've kind of stepped through the code, um, let's, uh, let's compile this thing and see what happens. So we had a successful compile. Uh, the sketch is using 12% of our program storage space and the global variables are using 12% of the dynamic memory. So now let's go ahead and upload this to the Arduino and uh, take a look at it. Now we're doing our upload. Upload's done. And we can see our little LED came on. Did another conversion. See, it's nice having that blue LED because then it sort of shows you, hey, it's doing the conversion. It's done. It's doing the conversion. It's done. So let's take a look at our serial monitor. If you go right up here in the top right hand corner, you'll see serial monitor. And you open this up. Hmm, I already have it open. So we open this up and you can see there's just constantly looping, doing the conversion, and spitting out the values. So as you can see, it's it's doing the conversions, it's spitting them out correctly. Um, I would say awesome no magic smoke no bad things happening everything's working like we want it to so what happens if we uh, stick our finger on the temperature sensor for instance So you can see it went up and then it's going back down to uh, 
room temperature. So all in all, I think this is a win. So now you can use this for lots of different things. I mean if you wanted to um, make a thermostat, if you wanted to have a temperature sensor to monitor a chip on a board that was getting really hot, if you wanted to mount it on the back side of a heat sink to see how hot some things are getting. Um, it's really nice because you have a temperature value that you can compare to and shut a system down if something gets too hot or shut a system down if something gets too cold. Um, I'll put the I'll put a picture of the schematic on the screen here and uh, let you take a look at that and other than that thanks for watching uh, shoot a like give a subscribe let me know what you think um, I do plan on doing some more of these videos depending on how they're received so we'll see where we go from here thanks for watching I'll see you next time